how's everybody doing? Uh, I'm Luke McGarry. Um, I've, seen, I've seen some thumbs up in the chat. Um, so yes, I'm Luke McGarry. Uh, my brother, Joe, this is our seminar together. He's waiting just off screen, um, running the tech end of this. Um, he might stick his hand in and wave. Nope, he's not even going to stick his hand in and wave. Um, but yes, together, we are Fantastic Heat Brothers. We're a small design studio. Uh, we've created animated music videos, commercials, short films, et cetera, for the likes of Jack Black and Tenacious D, Desaparecidos, Vice Magazine, Vans Shoes, Visa, Geico Insurance, and more. Um, you, I'm not going to do a, you know, big long example of our work, but you can see more of it at lukemcgarry.com if you're interested. Um, in this seminar, I'm going to give you an overview of our animation techniques from, uh, you know, the perspective of two self-taught dudes <laughs> who basically blagged their way into the industry. Um, it's going to kind of cover the range from very beginner simple animation to slightly more complex stuff. Um, it requires a lot of screen sharing. So a lot of this is pre-taped, which is quite Blue Peter kind of, here's one I made earlier. Um, and yes, I'll be answering questions at the end. So you know, luckily you won't be able to shout any questions out because um, I'm just going to be playing a video. But I'm here and um, I'll be, you know, checking out your questions in the chat if you have them. And then we'll have a brief discussion afterwards. Uh, so without further ado, I'm actually going to show the little intro movie ad we made for this workshop about seven months ago to advertise it because I think it gives you a brief explainer and is also, it just makes me laugh. Here we go. Some people will tell you you need a huge studio, a team of animators, and a massive budget to create animated music videos and commercials. We're the McGarry Brothers, and we say you just need a laptop and you can animate anywhere, like by the pool. In an empty hotel bar. Even hiding in the bushes. It worked for us. Join us at the Lakes International Comic Arts Festival for our guerrilla animation workshop. See you at the Lakes. All right. Hello. We are um, back. That was a little odd. Um, if, uh, if the audio drops out for any reason or anything, everybody give me a big frantic wave. Um, but other than that, I think we're good to go. And yeah, I'm just going to go straight into the seminar. Um, talk to you in a bit. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this really simple two frame animation that I do whenever I'm in a hotel room. Um, you find a notepad like this and you do a simple little drawing. You want to do it on so you've got page one here. You want to do it on page two to start with because you're going to do a light box effect. So here's drawing of me. Arm there, arm there. A little bit of a thrust. So that's panel one. Then for panel two, I just Googled the word white <laughs> on the internet. You can use it, oops, you can use it as a homemade light box. Panel two. It's the only problem with the <laughs> not a traditional light box. legs in the same spot. And then you should theoretically have a little flip book. And sexy dance to open the seminar with. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do a really simple three frame procreate GIF. I'm going to be using two apps here on my iPad. Procreate is $9.99 in the App Store. Giftvid is $0.99, cents, I think. I'm sure you can find free apps that do similar things, but these are professional standard. And, you know, the cost of paper and pens, it probably evens out. So start with a really simple drawing. I've chosen a caricature of myself. In a more complex animation, you'd probably kind of break each segment down. So we're going to be doing a little wave here. Um, you would animate the arm separately, but this is quick and dirty. 
um, gorilla animation. So first frame, drop it down to 50%. Draw the second frame. As you can see, the arm has moved slightly. Drop that down to about 50% as well. Third frame, there you go. Bump everything back up to 100% and then explore it. Here you go. It's going to show you a little preview and you go export animated GIF. That's going way too fast. That's automatically set to 15 frames per second. I like to bump it down to eight. Um, traditional animation runs at 24 frames per second. Eight is a divisible of that. Um, so it just kind of makes sense. Uh, export it, save image, and then um, you take it into GIF vid, hit create, GIF to video, select your recently explored GIF, set it to the highest quality, and then you've got a little wave. Um, I like to set it to however many loops make it 15 seconds because that's the length of an Instagram story. And then you, again, explore it, airdrop it to your phone, and away we go. Now that it's on my phone, look, we've got a little waving guy. It's me waving, saying hello. Take it into Instagram. Everybody knows how to post an Instagram story, but this is just to show you, look at this, look at how fast this is. You're now a professional Instagram animator. Open your stories. Oops, wrong one. Here you go. Look at that. And now watch those sweet, sweet views roll in. <laughs> All right. The next thing I want to show you is how to do a transparent GIF sticker for your Instagram stories. We're back in Procreate. It's exactly the same process as before. I've drawn a little speech bubble here. Now I've dropped the opacity down to 50% and I'm adding another layer. Again, just kind of tracing it. This one's slightly bigger because I want the speech bubble size to fluctuate. Now, this is something I'll cover a bit later, but I'm going to take the third frame and drop it into the middle, and I'm going to do a kind of tween frame. So instead of an even bigger frame, this will act as a kind of transitional in-between frame to sort of make the fluctuation smoother. Um, again, if you know about animation, this is old hat to you, but if you're learning, this is something I kind of wish somebody had told me off the bat and I didn't have to figure out for myself. Uh, next, I'm going to add some speech bubbles, some text. That's the word I'm looking for. Looks good to me. That's my little slogan that I've chosen here. You can do anything you want for GIFs, um, but I like to do these little speech bubbles. They look funny in the stories. Text-wise, I like to keep the text the same size and let the bubble do most of the movement because otherwise you won't be able to read it. It'll look insane. We're not exploring it yet, but I'm just going to test the animation to make sure it does indeed looks good to me. And there, there it does. That looks good to me. So back in, because this is a transparent GIF, I've turned the background layer off and I'm going to fill the uh, speech bubble in. Because Procreate isn't... Um, you don't have as much control over it as you would in Photoshop. Um, the fills aren't super clean. There's a little bit of pixelation around it. So I've added, I've changed the background to fuchsia so I can see if there's any kind of bleeds, any transparent spots. And I'm just filling in the holes on a separate layer, duplicating that layer, flattening it onto all these speech bubbles. And there you go. There's no bleeds through. And look at that. A perfect GIF with no holes in it. So... We explore it and we will take that, we'll save it. We're not making it a video this time. We're just saving it to our photos as a GIF. We're opening Giphy and we're gonna upload it straight to Giphy. There you go. Add some hashtags to it, kind of describe it. Looks good, sticker, transparent. That makes sure it kind of shows up in the transparent sticker section on Giphy. I put my name in there to make it easier to search. You can never have too many hashtags. Just go wild with the hashtags. And there you go. It's uploaded. This is me adding it to an Instagram story. Let me do that for you. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You've got a sticker there. Easily searchable in the Instagram Giphy marketplace. And it's uh, somebody's legs. That's California, baby. So I've got a Giphy channel. Uh, I've only got 76 GIFs on there, but I've got 517 million views. If only I got paid, even a penny for each view. But yeah, you can just be making Giphy stickers as you sat there watching telly, as you're waiting for a bus when you're at the doctor's office. 
whatever you want to see on Instagram, whatever you think people would use, whatever you think you would use. I made one of me doing keepy uppies with a football that I keep seeing on professional football teams, Instagram stories. I made one that just says, don't not come to this, that every promoter all over the world uses to promote their club nights and concerts. You can really just do anything with Giphy. It's a lot of fun. The next thing I want to show you is um, a slightly more complex animation, but using the exact same methods we've already discussed. This is Procreate again. I've added an isometric grid just for my photo roll. I just grabbed it off Google. I'm sketching this out because I want it to be a bit neater, but you can be as sloppy with this stuff as you want. Here I am, I'm drawing a keyboard. Uh, I'm just, you know, working on multiple layers as per usual, just adjusting the transparency so I can see the grid below. I'm adding myself on a new layer to make animation easier. Otherwise I'd have to redraw the keyboard every time. Yeah, there you go. Four layers. This is just a four frame GIF, but as you can see, it looks, the result is a lot more complex. Adding myself, really the only thing that's changing is the hands, as you can see here coloring it in so that I'm not a ghost, so I'm not see-through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a green layer. If you can't export to an alpha channel or export as transparent, just turning the background a bright green uh, is the next best thing because you can take it into Premiere Pro and use it the same way a green screen works. And now over to Joe. Right, Joe here to explain a bit further. I'm gonna do this in Premiere Pro. You could probably do it in iMovie, Final Cut, any of those. I'm gonna start a new sequence, make sure it's 1920 by 1080 as that's sort of HD size, but you can do it any size you want. I'll drag Luke's clips onto the timeline here, you know, size it up a bit, make sure it looks perfect. This is where the green screen comes in. It's a plugin called Ultra Key. I think it's just built into Premiere Pro there. Select the green and it just disappears automatically. Now I can drag in some royalty-free stock footage of some lovely clouds, place it behind Luke there, make sure they're the same length in case I decide to loop it. Just put the finishing touches on that. And that looks great, but I think we should probably add a bit of music since he's playing the keyboard. So if you're a musician, you already know what you're doing. You don't need to hear this. But if you aren't or you don't know how to play an instrument at all, you will get into trouble for borrowing other people's music. So why not make your own? Uh, there are a load of free apps. I really like this one called Figure by Propellerhead. You genuinely just make synth arpeggios by dragging your finger around. Um, I wanted something that sounded a bit like Stranger Things, so I found this sound. Right, back in Premiere Pro going to drag Luke's audio file in and onto the timeline. I'll put a fade at the beginning and end of the track so that it's not too loud when it comes in and goes out smoothly. And I'll adjust the clip length so it's the same length as the music. Now you see the audio comes in here, it's way too loud. You see it hitting red in the audio meter. So let's bring the volume down so that it only hits yellow. And that's much more pleasant. And there we go, Luke playing the synth, our very own Luke Wakeman. So the next thing I want to show you is a slightly more quote unquote professional project I did for Van's shoes. We're not on an iPad or a phone anymore. Now we're on the computer using Flash. You can use Toon Boom or any of those other programs. They're all keyframe based and that's basically what we're talking about. So for an action sequence like this, I like to pencil out what's going to happen before I go to final animation. I start with the first frame, then go to the last frame, and then split the difference and do the middle frame. And then divide those two sequences and do the middle frame of those two, and so on and so forth, until you've got a smooth flow of action. This might sound like common sense, but it wasn't to me, but it took me a few years of experimenting to determine that was the best way. So you go back and forth until you're happy with the action. Sorry to interrupt, but you've gone a little bit quiet. I like the even and sometimes the vibration. Yeah, the sound's dropping out. Yeah, the sound's dropping out. Vibration. Then you take your pencil layers and you just set them to guide by the yeah. first. That way you don't have Luke. to go back in. Joe, Luke. Yeah, you're not sharp enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's it's all it's all gone quiet. 
I can hear you, but you're very, very, very quiet. I'm very quiet. Or you can just make your own. Uh, we use a thing called SoundSnap. It's an annual subscription. Much better. We did a project for a bigger company that gave us their login. And for years afterwards, we were using their password unbeknownst to them. But then they changed it. I think they caught wise. So we it was so good that we took an annual subscription of our own. Now I'm going to pass you over to Joe to show you how to add sounds back in Premiere Pro. Right, so we've brought the audio in just like we did the music in the last sequence. I've layered these sound effects, a crunch. Uh, we've got a thud. And then we've got a skateboard sound. I think it's good to layer these things. I think it's more convincing. So here they are together. And again, there we go. Moving on, I mentioned tweening earlier. Let's take a closer look at tween frames. You might notice that some newer animation looks different to kind of traditional Disney or Fleischer or any of those old animation studios. And that's because of motion tweening, which is a feature available in a lot of these animation programs. I use it sparingly. You can see these blue frames at the top here. They do get a nice smooth movement to her head nodding, but use it too much and it can look kind of janky for lack of a better word. I prefer to do these more traditional hand-drawn tween frames, you know, conveying a sense of movement and dynamism from one pose to another. If you look at like a, a video of a real person doing something uh, engaged in any form of action, and you pause it, more than likely it will be a bit blurred because real life doesn't happen at 24 frames per second, but animation is captured at 24 frames per second. So you'll get some blurring in between. Think of that picture of Marge Simpson on the t-shirt where her face got smudged. It's sort of that idea. You're smudging in between two frames. It also frankly saves you a lot of animation time rather than having to go through every single little pose between two scenes. And it would be quite jerky and lifeless and stiff. This is funny and it's dynamic. And um, again, frankly, it just saves you. <laughs> it saves you drawing out 12 frames of you know somebody's leg moving incrementally. So this was a dance sequence where two women start in a dance off. This is one of the DJs from Chromio jumping in to join them. Again, if I was doing this frame by frame by frame, I'd have to draw him from every single minute different angle as he came towards the camera. But here, you can do it in about six or seven frames, just blur most of them, and it looks a lot funnier. It gives it a real sense of impact. Here he goes, whoomp. They're a lot of fun to draw, frankly, uh, these funny looking in-between frames. Um, here's an example of two very similar sequences, one with tweens, one without. So this first one is from our Hoodie Allen video. You can see that there's no tweening on this motorcycle spin. And this is from my latest black leather video, but there's a little bit of tween and you can just see that there's a bit more life, a bit more flow to this turn. It's also a good example of how you can just reuse props because why would I draw that motorcycle twice? It was too hard. I do that all the time and I rarely get caught. All right, now I'm gonna show you how we set up for lip syncing. As you can see, I've added the character's head on a new layer as a symbol. A symbol is basically a self-contained movie clip with a handful of frames in it. If you set it to loop, it will run all the frames and look crazy. If you set it to single frame, say frame three, it will display that mouth shape only. 
if you open it up, you can see I've created the head with a handful of symbols, uh, the eyes, the nose, the jawline, et cetera, the mouth. Uh, they're all their own thing. The mouth, I've labeled each mouth shape with an invisible guide to make life easier for us. So that's, as you can see, the relaxed mouth. We've got the M, B, the E, A, the U, the O, all sorts of shapes. You probably won't need all of these, but it's good to have them. I found them in an old Ardman book on claymation, but um, as with anything, you can just Google a chart for animation mouth shapes. Again, you don't need to get this complex, but I've broken the head down into every possible element I could need, just so I won't have to redraw the head a bunch of times. Even the eyes are their own symbol. Get those waggly little eyebrows. You don't have to do the eyes. Um, a lot of the times I don't bother, but eyebrow movement, squinty eyes, blinking, just adds a lot of life and verisimilitude to the animation. Once you've got your mouth shape set up, you can bring in the audio that you plan to sync. You can see the peaks and troughs of the waveform there. So it's an excellent clue as to where words begin and end. You can try and match your mouth shapes up to those. Uh, but from there, it really is just a case of trial and error. You just have to keep going back and forth, trying to figure out what shapes match which sounds. One tip I would offer is really do focus on sounds rather than say how a word is spelled. So if somebody says face, for example, it's not F-A-C-E, it's F long A S. And then just keep going. Once you're done, you can save it and explore it. Right, I'm going to show you how to set up a little world in After Effects. So I've set up a camera. That's not usually the first step, but for these purposes, it works better. You can see the camera runs on keyframes like most of the animation programs. And then I've brought in two images uh, for the background. They're just two flat JPEGs, but you see if you rotate one at 90 degrees and set them both to 3D layers, that you can have this sort of 3D effect. Now, uh, sometimes when you look through the camera, there's sort of a, a gap. You can see that black gap at the bottom there. So I just duplicate the background layers and flip them. I think we were on a deadline when we did this, so I kind of cheated a bit, but it works. You don't notice. So you can see how the camera moves through the world. Then you bring in your animation files. Flash exports them as uh, SWFs with transparent backgrounds, and that's really important is having that transparent background. Uh, again, as we mentioned before, if you can't do that, you can put it on a bright green background and do the green screen effect, but transparent is better. So you can see now I've rotated one of the SWFs uh, 90 degrees to match the thing. Again, 3D layers so that when the camera moves through the world, you have this sort of depth of field, you know, background motion, groovy 3D effect. Now you'll see uh, in that as the camera rotates there, that it's sort of stiff and uncomfortable. And you can get away with that. But we talked about tweening so much earlier, it'd be a shame not to apply that to this as well. So I kind of cheat in After Effects, but this is a totally valid way of doing it. And it's sort of more like, you know, real filmic feel. I just put a blur layer on, you know, so, and again, tweens with the keyframes, the blur layer starts at zero, then goes to 100, then back to zero. And you'll see that as it, the camera rotates through here, it's a much more natural look and feel. Right, once you've exported that After Effects file, I usually do it as a, an MP4, that's fine. It doesn't need to be super high quality, um, especially if it's just going on the internet. If it's for TV, then you probably need to figure out doing it at 4K, but nothing's on TV anymore, is it? So export your After Effects file, bring it into Premiere Pro or whatever film editing program you like, and then just as with the music and sound effects we showed you earlier, drop it in. Because you've already done the lip syncing in Flash earlier, it's just a case of lining the audio up. And here you go, here's your finished product. This pop locking battle in Kuala Lumpur of all places was like one of the coolest things we've ever witnessed from an audience. Right, Pete? Yep. All right. I think that might be it. Hopefully my audio is on. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, yeah, okay, got some thumbs up. Um, obviously our tutorial went 
a bit fast, but it was kind of a, just meant to be a brief overview. And, um, you know, it at least shows you what you might be able to do, what you can do, or at least what to Google if you want to know more about. 90% um, of everything we learned uh, was just from online tutorials. I think that's how everybody learns stuff these days. I don't think they even make manuals anymore. Um, so yeah, you know. <laughs> do we have any questions? I think if you've got anything in the chat, just bang it in there. Um, otherwise, you know, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for watching. What was the name? What was the name? Oh, you've got them. The music app. Yes, I can see them in the chat. Yeah, um, it was called Figure by Propellerhead. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really good. It's free, I think. Um, yeah. Maybe you could maybe just, you could show yeah. us the whole video because we've got quite a lot of time. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, wait, which whole video? <laughs> For the music video. Oh, um, do we have it? I don't think we have it set up in here. Do we have the um, the music video set up? No, I don't think we do. We're oh, not no we're not totally prepared. <laughs> oh, that's fine. You've got lots of questions coming in. Oh, okay. Um, do you want to pick them out? Do you want to pick out the, uh, uh, let's see. Um, we'll go with any advice about breaking into the industry. Um Again, it's, it's everybody's sort of um, advice on that is different because so much of it is right time, right place. Um, I got into the animation industry through doing concert posters for different bands. And then when they said they liked my artwork and asked if I could do an animated video, I lied and said I knew how to animate um, and then quickly learned. Um, but most of it is just kind of being out there on social media, doing little animations, kind of sharing them around, um, you know, consistently posting and, you know, showing people that you are capable of this stuff. And eventually, you know, they just kind of find you. Also using hashtags, um, you know, reaching out to people, knocking on doors, the usual stuff, but so much of it is kind of right time, right place. And, and just having the work to show uh, afterwards. Um, that I mean that that pretty much covers my journey from amateur to professional as well was um <laughs> lying that my amateur animation experience was enough uh, to do a music video and then getting paid to do a music video. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Just that's uh, as I always say, that's the freelancer's code is um just lie and say you know how to do stuff uh, and then learn it afterwards. and um, I mean, they say don't write checks that your ass at, that your ass can't cash, but um, you know, do it. Gamble, take the gamble, so you can. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, covered the copyright issue with sound and music. Yeah, somehow the man will always find you if you uh, steal music and upload it, even if it's the most obscure track in the world. They will track you down. Um, I've had problems with that in the past. So it's easier to just kind of make your own stuff. Um, uh, yeah, otherwise it just gets taken down. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, if you're looking for figure, it's by Propellerhead, um, if that helps. Um, and yes, uh, this video will be uploaded online so you can rewatch it. Um, the other reason we did it so fast is when I watch tutorials, it's kind of that joke about when you look up a recipe and there's 10 paragraphs on, you know, somebody's life experience and what that recipe means to them. Uh, anytime I watch a tutorial, there's about 20 minutes of exposition and some guy going, you know, Oh, this is, you know, boring. Just get to the, get to the good stuff. Breakneck pace. Exactly. <laughs> um, do we have any other questions? If not, um, I'll let everybody catch their trains, et cetera. Oh, do you have any tips regarding portfolios and showreels? Um, yes, d do one, <laughs> which um, I haven't done. And I keep, I keep telling Joe, uh, I should really cut together a, a reel of a, my animation. And he goes, yes, yes, you should. And I have yet to do it. Um, so luckily, uh, a lot of my work has kind of come through word of mouth um, 
my first project, um, I touched on it a bit uh, where I reused the motorcycle. One of my first projects was a music video for this band, um, the Macaroons, who were like a children's band. And it just so happened that they were friends with this proper band called Gusto, uh, who also needed a music video. So they're like, oh, you should use our guy, Luke. He's new, but he's really good. Um, and then they also had a cowboy scene where I'd used like a covered wagon and a Western background and I just reused it in their video and they went, wait, wait a minute, we've just seen that. So, um, you know, uh, kind of word of mouth stuff was my point there. Um, yes, uh, I've tried to make animation look easy. It doesn't, some of it takes ages, especially when you're there only two people working in a studio. Um, a lot of professional stuff has massive teams of animators, um, but yes, we've never missed a deadline. Um, we do storyboard first, um, even just loosely. I should have put that in there, but they're genuinely, um, look, I'll storyboard for you right now. These are my storyboards. Um, I'm drawing it, one sec. Here's Luke talking on a microphone. Here's Luke bursting into flames. Here we go. <laughs> Those are the extent of my story voids. They can be as simple as that. Um, it's only a problem when the client asks to see the story voids. <laughs> can, we, can we see what you've been working on? Um, that said, that's always good too, because you show them, if you do them as simple as this, you send them over and go, these are mainly for me. Um, you know, I hope you can follow it, but I think it's pretty clear what's happening. And um, one time we were going out to a music festival and I had forgotten that the deadline for an animation project, the, at least the storyboards, was that day. And so half an hour before we got in the car, I did an entire three-minute music video storyboarded like this. I went, yeah, I, I think it's pretty clear. Um, and luckily, we got away with it. But yeah, the, they were quite annoyed. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, let's see, reading the rest of the questions. Um, Oh, what programs did I use to animate and add sound, et cetera, for more professional projects? Um, again, I use Flash because that's what I taught myself um, uh, on in high school. That's what I learned on. Um, but I think everybody now uses Toon Boom. That's the professional standard. Um, I think it's, it might even be free. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's like free for a, a home version and then you have to pay a bit for the professional one. Um, but Toon Boom's really good and it's basically the same as Flash. But as I say, I haven't taught myself any new programs because I've been too busy <laughs> lying about being able to animate uh, and having to learn other stuff. Um, and I don't remember Anaboom. Um, but yeah, and to add sound, we use um, Premiere Pro, um, which is part of the Adobe Creative Suite. But I think there are free versions of stuff. You can even do that stuff in iMovie. Honestly, um, I do a lot of um, short little animations on the iMovie that came on my iPhone because they've got actually a pretty good green screen um, capability and you can just drop sounds in and stuff. So yeah, you can really find ways around, you know, cobbling all of this together. Um, and then obviously, yeah, we use After Effects for the kind of 3D stage building stuff. Uh, all of this, again, I think is part of the Adobe Creative Suite, but there must be, they don't have a monopoly. This is very BBC to go. Uh, other, other options are available <laughs> um, for balance. I'm providing balance. Um, how to price competitively against larger studios? Do you charge hourly? Um, I actually don't charge hourly because I do work quickly, as you've seen. So I find that charging hourly uh, you end up shooting yourself in the foot. You're punishing yourself for turning a project around quickly. So for animation, I typically charge per minute of animation or, or fraction thereof. So even if it's, you know, a 20 second animation, you're charging your minute rate. Um, uh, I won't, I won't be gauche and discuss how much I charge, but, um, Frankly, I always tell people is this, it's usually about this amount for a minute, um, but that depends on the context. So obviously like somebody sitting in a chair, not moving, if you want a minute of that, 
that's a lot easier to do than 300 Spartans, you know, firing a, a herd of elephants. Um, so, you know, if you were charging, you know, uh, <laughs> 50 quid a minute um, to animate 300 Spartans, you, you know, um, you're hurting yourself. I'll just chip in oh, from off Joe's screen. chipping in from well. off screen. Um, I'm sure you can hear me. You've probably seen my hand sort of poking in. I'm running all the tech stuff over here, so I apologize for the glitches earlier. But in terms of pricing, um, one thing that we've found is in terms of negotiating with the client is you want to try and get them to throw out a number first. You play that game where it's sort of, you go, yeah, and you know, you're exchanging emails, you go, and, and what type of budget did you have in mind for yeah. this? And they'll go, well, I don't know, what do you usually charge for, you know, and you go, well, you know, honestly, it depends on the product. Do everything you can to get them to throw out yeah. a number first, because then they'll go, okay, I've got a budget of 500 quid. Yeah. And you go, well, usually I charge, I think I'd usually charge about 750 for this. Yeah. <laughs> or no, I'd usually charge about a grand for this, but we can do 750. Exactly. They never, that's first rule of negotiating is they never throw out what they're willing to spend first. Exactly. They'll, go, they'll try and undercut themselves. So, so the key techniques, the key takeaways are you go, um, well, what budget did you have in mind? I'm sure we can find a way to work within that. That's that's what I always say. That's the big trick. And then the, that tricks them into throwing out their number and they go, oh, I'm going to get a deal here. And then you always bump it up by double it and then say you can do it for 25% less than that. So yeah, those are those are the tricks. So again, 500, tell them you usually charge a grand, but you can probably do it for 750. And um, the, those are the tricks. Tricks of the trade. You can always squeeze a little bit more. You can always squeeze a little bit more. Except when you go, um, <laughs> you, you tell them, you know, oh, it's it would be X amount. And they go, great. And you go, oh, no, <laughs> I could have charged double that. That's happened to me a handful of times as well. Well, you th think you're throwing out a big number and they agree, agree too quickly. Um, an absolute nightmare. Um, but then you can always go, oh, this is this has gone way over yeah this is taking a lot longer than i thought guys <laughs> i'm gonna have to bump it up a bit um but yeah those are so those this has become less an, a thing about um yeah typical manx there you go uh this has become less about animation now and more just about how to scam people out of money <laughs> um, and i think that's probably where we should leave it before, yeah that, exactly before, before we start trying to myself. take over the to, to take over the government <laughs> yeah absolutely so um, to, on, on the um, subject of scamming people out of money, this has obviously been a free workshop and um, it's been very enlightening, I think, and very valuable. So if you have enjoyed it and if you have enjoyed the festival and you do love the festival and you want the festival to continue, please consider donating to us by visiting our website and clicking the yellow heart in the top right hand corner. We've got a GoFundMe going and it's donations which will keep us going. So thank right. you, everybody. Thank you, Joe and Luke. You've been fantastic. And uh, I hope thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you to the Lakes for having us. <laughs> I hope you have a good birthday. And you thank a, you. And the rest of your day is restful and enjoyable. And then everybody else, have a lovely evening. And we'll see you next year. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good one. Cheers.